Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel and in this video, I'm going to talk about all the requirements that you need to know to get started with Microsoft Defender for Endpoints. Now, in the last video, we have discussed about the product capability, what exactly the purpose behind using Microsoft Defender for Endpoints and where exactly it fits in in M365 Defender Suite. Whereas the core agenda of this video will be knowing all the requirements starting from portal access to enablement of preview features, license requirements, what are the different platforms which are supported with the respective versions, what is a network requirement and why there is a dependency of Microsoft Defender for Endpoints on Microsoft Defender for Anti-Malware. Okay, or Microsoft Defender anti-malware uh, service that runs on the endpoints. Now, to begin with, the very first thing, there are two portals from which you can go ahead and access uh, Microsoft Defender for endpoints. The first one is securitycenter.windows.com. This is the dedicated portal for Microsoft Defender for endpoints, wherein you will get all the options which we have discussed in our last video, specifically that image which I have shown, which lists down the six major pillars on which Microsoft Defender for Endpoint works. But when we talk about security.microsoft.com, it's the new portal which has a combination of multiple security services. This section that you see here lists down all the capabilities which is related to endpoint protection, whereas this section that you see here is moreover related to Microsoft Defender for Office 365. Now, there is one more feature which I have discussed in the last video, and that is portal redirection. That means there is a feature now wherein once portal redirection is enabled, all the users who are signing in to securitycenter.windows.com will get redirected to this particular portal. Now, the question comes how you should enable it. Go to settings and then click on this option which says portal redirection and then just switch on this option if it is required for your enterprise or if you want all your security analysts maybe they belong to a different key focus area to work on one single portal the next thing that i would like to talk about is moreover related to a step that has to be taken before onboarding the device and that's moreover related to choosing data center location. So when you run the onboarding wizard for the first time, or when you try to set up Microsoft Defender for Endpoint for the first time, you'll get the option to choose where exactly the data should get saved, okay? Now, when I talk about the locations, US, UK, and Europe, these are the three locations where you can save the data, the telemetry, which Microsoft Defender for Endpoint is collecting, as well as the upper limit for data retention is 180 days. Now, this has nothing to do with the implementation that you might do with SIM. That means you can actually go ahead and query uh, the telemetry which uh, is generated by Microsoft Defender for Endpoints and then you can save it for depending upon your own implementation for SIM. There could be some limit, there could be no limit. It all depends how you have implemented SIM. But when we talk about the native capability of Microsoft Defender for Endpoints, the upper limit is 180 days altogether. Now from uh, enablement of preview features perspective, all you have to do is you have to click on advanced features, then scroll down to the bottom and just switch on this particular option that you get here. And that's it. You will be able to get all the preview features which are getting released. So from a data retention perspective, the upper limit is 180 days and preview feature is enabled from advanced features section altogether. Now, the next thing that I would like to talk about is the license requirement. So you can have any of these SKUs if you want to use Windows Defender for Endpoint or Microsoft Defender for Endpoint to be very precise. And depending upon the Windows version that you have that, that exists in your enterprise, you can actually check this particular PDF document. I will be sharing this in the description section of this video, wherein it lists down that with which version of Windows, which feature is available, right? So these are all different features that are more related to Windows, uh, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And then you have Windows version specified here, with which you can just go ahead and check uh, what kind of feature is available. Now with every active license that you have assigned to a user, five concurrent devices 
can be onboarded. This is also something which exists from a licensing perspective. When we talk about supported version, this is the list of the current versions of Windows 10 which are supported. Now this list will vary depending upon you know the addition or the removal of different version of Windows as we move along as we go ahead you know in couple of years this list will for sure be customized but as of today this is the list of all the Windows versions which are supported. Now there is also very important aspect which is mentioned on the official documentation of Microsoft and that's moreover related to the virtualized environment and I literally want to read out these three statements for you. Machines that are running mobile version of Windows such as Windows CE and Windows 10 Mobile are not supported. Virtual machines running Windows 10 Enterprise 2016 LTSB edition may encounter some of the performance issues if you run them on non-Microsoft virtualized environments. And for virtual environments, Microsoft recommends using Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC 2019 or later. Now, when we talk about other platforms, anything that is above iOS 11 is supported from an iOS platform perspective. Anything which is Android 6.0 or above is supported. For Mac, these are the three different editions which are supported as of now, which is 11, 10.15, 10.14. Any beta version for any of the edition is not supported. When we talk about Linux, this is the complete list which is supported as of now. Whenever we are talking about platform, just make sure that you keep on checking the official documentation of Microsoft itself because this is the kind of information which keeps on varying with the time. So the current list when we talk about Linux is Red Hat, CentOS, Ubuntu, Debian, Linux Enterprise Servers and Oracle Linux. Now there is also a minimum kernel requirement which is 3.10.0-327. Now, this was moreover related to platforms, endpoints, and uh, the devices which the users will be using. But if I talk about current times, most of the enterprises have multi-cloud environments, right? Wherein you have different servers which are created on different platforms altogether. But you may have to, uh, you know, have a specific security intensity expanded across all the platforms, or you may have to define a common security practice that exists for each and every endpoint, be it server or be it the endpoint, be it the Windows 10 machine which the user is using, right? So from a multi-cloud environment perspective, now I'm going to name two other products which are more related to Azure, but they will simplify things for you. The first one is Azure Arc itself, wherein you can get the machines onboarded from a different platform to Azure from a security perspective. Now, the reason why I'm saying security perspective, because Azure Arc is completely integrated with Azure Security Center and what it helps in a nutshell is to define a common security practices for all the other servers which exist in multi-cloud environments. Now this image that you see here right now is something that I have copied from the official documentation of Azure Security Center and I will be sharing that documentation in the description section as well. But if you will see or if you will try to get a meaning from this particular image altogether, it clearly simplifies or it clearly signifies in a nutshell that the resources that exist on cross-platform solution, that means which are not in Azure, can also be managed from Azure Security Center. So the service which is a part of Azure Security Center which helps you protect all the other endpoints which you might have onboarded from uh, different cloud providers or different servers that you have onboarded from different cloud provider that could be AWS, Google or even from your on-prem environments is being termed as Azure Defender for servers. This is that particular service. Now there is a very important line which I just want to read out for you and that is integrated license for Microsoft Defender for endpoints, Windows only as of now. Azure Defender for Servers includes Microsoft Defender for Endpoints, 
Together, they provide a comprehensive endpoint detection and response capabilities. For more information, you can go ahead and read this article. Just to name some of the capabilities which exist, vulnerability assessment, just-in-time access for virtual machines, and then you have file integrity monitoring, and then the list just goes on. Now, these are the capabilities which are moreover related to Azure Defender for Server. But as I said before, that this is a kind of a capability that can be used to protect the servers that exist in multi-cloud environments or even in your on-prem environments okay now let's talk about the network requirements from a network requirement perspective internet connectivity is required either direct or with the help of proxy you can choose any of these model now when we talk about the data which is being shared between the endpoint and the Microsoft Defender for endpoint service is around 5 MB of cyber threat data which has been shared on a daily basis but this does not include the file upload activities or investigation package collection that means if there is any special activity that's that you are doing that's not included in this 5 MB of data which has been shared between the endpoint and the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint services. Now there is one more very important aspect which is related to sensors okay and that is the sensor on the endpoint uses WinHTTP so you have to make sure this is enabled in your enterprise or in your environment and also the sensor that exists on the device which actually sends all the information it runs in machine context now there is a very specific list of endpoints which should be accessible from all your devices now I will be sharing this link in the description section as well but this is the excel file that will be downloaded the moment you'll go to that particular link and as you can see it has multiple sheets which has different kind of information available but one very important aspect which i would like to show you guys and that is this particular section which says microsoft defender process now these are the different process which are used by microsoft defender for endpoints which has its own purpose in terms of collecting information and then sending to the respective endpoints okay now there is one more requirement from a client perspective and that is diagnostic data service that exists on the endpoint so for that what you have to do is you have to check on your endpoint itself whether diagnostic data service is enabled by default or not from a larger scale perspective you can go ahead and check this with the help of group policy object so the first command that you have to run is scqc diacrack and then you have to make sure that the start type value should be auto start but let's say it's not that for some reason then you can go ahead and run this command which says scconfig diacrack start equal to auto the moment you'll run this command the changes will be made and this time this value will be set to what is required okay now when we talk about Microsoft Defender for endpoint uh, as a whole the product has a lot more capabilities on Microsoft Defender for anti malware because this is something which is actually scanning and capturing the telemetry which is available on your device or on your endpoint likewise file information just an example okay so you have to make sure that anti malware service from a windows defender perspective to be very precise when it comes to endpoint should be running either in active mode or in passive mode altogether but if this service is disabled then for sure there will be issues okay now that's the reason why it is very important to make sure that microsoft defender antivirus early launch anti malware solution is or driver does exist on your device and to be very precise again this is something which i have directly taken from the article because it makes a lot more sense if you are using microsoft defender antivirus as a pr primary anti malware solution or a product on your device defender for endpoint agent will successfully onboard but if it is not the case if this particular service is disabled then it will not work and just to be sure about the keys the registry keys which are available these are the ones so if you have disabled them with the help of group policy object either remove those devices from getting onboarded or remove the group policy object to make sure the device gets onboarded successfully
okay so this was all about knowing all the requirements the basic requirements in terms of getting started with microsoft defender for endpoints let's talk about a quick summary we have discussed about portal access preview feature licensing requirements supported versions network requirements and microsoft defender anti-malware requirements why it is required in the next video i'm going to talk about role-based access control for microsoft defender for endpoints now if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time